Welcome back to another training topic. Today we're going to be covering the setup and operation and just a general overview of Ladder 1. Ladder 1 is based out of Station 1. It is a 109 foot aerial device, just a straight stick. Uh, we have 500 gallons of water, about 30 gallons of foam, so it is a quint. Just a general layout inside. got radios, flashlights from the front, CAD terminal, radios, sirens over there from your home screen. Here you can do your emergency lights or any access any of your other information from this home screen right here. In the back, we've got seating for four in the back. So with the two in the front, it's a total of six. Tick, some eye protection, four gas monitor. We have our med bag down here. And our gloves are located right there. Under the seat, you got water. On this side, you've got some uh, smoke detector kit, some Tyvek suits. In the middle. You do have access to an axe and some other N95s and BSI after scene decon type stuff. Let's we'll start out over here at the pump panel. Got a nice layout letting you know where all of our lines are coming off uh, the color coordination of those lines we have two cross lays uh 200 foot inch and three quarter uh, your green line and your blue line uh, we also have a 200 foot two and a half inch cross lay as well truck has 500 gallons of water it is a 2000 gallon per minute pump Let's see if we can get you some of that information here for anybody that would like to have any of that so obviously we can access our tank to pump and tank fill and then any of our discharge lines that we would like to operate your officer side intake is located here driver side intake here uh, and then we also have your throttle control located here you can control your aerial discharge and your officer side LDH from up here you are able to control some of the scene lighting, your pump heat, your generator, and some of those items from the pump as well. Continuing to walk around the driver's cabinet, you got your SCBA for the driver, so we do carry six SCBA packs. Your hydrant wrench is located here, along with your short section of hydrant. Have all of our fittings in this cabinet. more fittings and a spare nozzle in this cabinet and then your ladder belts in that cabinet the next compartment we're gonna have our chainsaws which again it's just a fold-out type cabinet you get two chainsaws one with a guard and one without rolls back in and then you have your Cleveland load apartment packs here as well with your apartment bag here for that connection we do have two water cans in here as well spots for SCB holders 
and then two dry chem extinguishers. So you see it's a just a typical ABC. This one, and this one is a Purple K style of extinguisher. Also have your diesel fill located here. And as we open this up, this is going to be our K14 compartment. Uh, you got your fuel. And as this opens, hopefully your saws don't fall out, but you have your rescue saw and your steel saw that are set up with the rescue blade or the steel blade on it. And you also have some bar chain oil back there as well, along with some spare blades. Here we have our tool compartment located. Pull that out and access all of our tools. Along with some brooms and shovels as well. This truck has the cord reel mounted on the sides. Uh, Tower 3 is very similar, but Tower 3 actually has it mounted in the front bumper. This one on ladder one has two cord reels, one on each side of the truck. So on the back side here, we have our cord reel with our rewind. And then we have some pigtails set up in here as well from this cabinet. Your ladder for accessing the turntable. And then as we come around the back, you can see we have a 35 foot, three section ground ladder, 24 foot, two section ground ladder and a 16 foot roof ladder. We also have some New York hooks of varying sizes and lengths. You can see they are all set up with their grip on here as well. And then we have our 10 foot attic ladder. We also carry our blitz fire in this back compartment on three inch hose. I believe we've got 400 feet of three inch set up on here with your blitz fire set up pre-connected. Also have our LDH in the back. Should have about 600 feet of five inch LDH. So we keep coming around. Got our cones for any traffic incidents. Electrical positive pressure fan for ventilation. We have our RIT bag, RIT rope, a life jacket, uh, and some of our life safety rope all in this compartment here. See, we've got more spots for SCBA bottles. Currently out of SCBA bottles, but we'll eventually get some more. This compartment is pretty much left open for future use. Um, but we do have some floor dry uh, set up in this compartment as well. We do have a couple spare bottles on this truck, so there's three located here. And then this one has another spot for three, and it's empty right now. This compartment, uh, we've got our flag for some different ceremonies. We've got our overhaul buckets and some tarps uh, more tarps located up in here it's more of a salvage and overhaul type of a compartment and this is the pump panel on the officer side of the truck you got your short section of ldh and this is where your other cord reel is located here as well with the cord rewind also have access to your hose lines from this side as well The front bumper of the truck is where we house our third two and a half, or I'm sorry, third inch and three quarter, 200 foot pre-connect with some more floor dry in this front compartment here. From here, we'll go over some setup on pumping and then we'll switch over to set up and use of aerial. All 
All right, we're gonna go over the pumping setup and procedures on ladder one. I've just set up the nozzle on the front bumper discharge for now. We'll go ahead and get the truck turned on. We'll let the truck take a minute for all the computers and everything to come up and start running before we turn it on. All of our gauges are now reading. Go ahead and turn it on. All right, so the first thing to do is make sure that we're in neutral. Parking brake is set. And what we're gonna do is do our PTO switch over to pump. And I always just like to take my time to go slow with that. So we get our first light engaged. We're gonna come back to our transmission selection. Put it in drive. Wait for that to turn on. And then we've got our second green light turned on as well. So right now we do have our pump engaged. Uh, if we were gonna be using generator or any other aerial uh, PTO or anything else, we'd wanna make sure that those are also engaged right now as well. I'm just gonna turn them on. Once the truck is running at higher RPMs when we're pumping, it's difficult to turn those on. It might not work. So doing it when it's still at idle RPM is the time to do it. So before you get out of the truck, just engage them and then they're set. Just going to make sure that we're circulating water since our truck is in pump our door is open we might as well make sure that we're circulating all the water that we can and keeping it cool we want to deploy our red line that's our front bumper line so i'm going to come over here open up my front red line bumper discharge we're flowing water as we're flowing water i'm going to make sure i'm in pressure mode and dial it up to whatever your selected pressure is so you're going to select your pressure from here you can tell it's easy to cavitate this pump just flowing just from the tank so you're going to want to make sure that your tank fill line is shut anytime that you're flowing water from here, if we wanted to turn our foam on, we could just turn it on, select our pressure setting, or I'm sorry, our percentage settings from here. Or if we were gonna set up any intakes, we can set those up at this time as well. This is just the basic how to get water coming out of the truck. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back down to idle. We'll go ahead and shut my red line. If I wanted to lock it, you just put that out right there, and then that doesn't allow it to be moved. So that's your lock on that. And since I've got my line shut off, I wanna just continue circulating water so we don't overheat the pump. I'm just gonna open my tank fill back up as long as we're in pump. And that'll just make sure water doesn't sit in the pump and overheat it. And that's the basic setup on how to get water flowing out of the truck. All right, now that we've gone through pumping, I'm gonna go through the next step, which would be aerial setup. Before we set up our aerial, we wanna come back to the cab. Ensure from our home screen here that we have our aerial PTO and our generator are activated. We only need our aerial PTO to run the actual aerial hydraulics, uh, but it's also a good idea to have your generator PTO on as well. Just get in the habit, if you're gonna turn one on, you might as well turn them both on uh, and just have them ready. We'll go ahead and leave the cab. We'll come to the back of the truck. And from here, we're gonna open up these compartments. This compartment here is gonna tell us everything that we need to know about the ladder and the outriggers. If I want to, this is telling me I've got hydraulic pressure, my outriggers do not have any pressure on them. We're reading good, uh, good weight right now, so this is a smart ladder. It's gonna tell us when we're overloaded. Uh, we can turn lights on and off from this screen as well uh, air horn it's also going to tell us our flow uh, and from this position since we're bedded we can't move the ladder down left or right first things first is i need to make sure that we get our outrigger set up so i'm going to go ahead and turn my outrigger switch on i'm going to see that my low side is on the dry or i'm sorry the officer side 
So the first jacks that I want to bring down are going to be on the driver's side. So I'm going to go ahead and extend my jacks. And from here, you're going to be able to see when they're fully extended or not. Being mindful, anytime that we're going in and out with our jacks, we want to be keeping an eye on them. So kind of one hand on the switch, the other hand keeping an eye just to ensure that we're not hitting anything out there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side, just get the outrigger set up and ready for operation. All right, they're both out. My next move is to go ahead and get the pad set up. Since it's already out, I know where they're going to land. I can just go ahead, get my pads set up. Our pads are in place, they're gonna land right where the outriggers come down. Since this is my high side, I'm gonna go ahead and go down with our outriggers. Made contact with the rear, made contact with the front. And I wanna make sure that I've got those holes open. All I wanna do is just see that they made contact. I have a lot to come up on the other side, so it's just good to know that those are touching and then the other side is going up is going to put pressure on them. So I'll come over here and we're going to go down on our outriggers. Get the front outrigger. All right, they're both making contact. And from here, we're going to come up. And I just want to make sure I can see those holes so I can get a pin in, come back. My slope is at point seven i want to be within 0.5 so i'm just going to come up a little bit higher on both of these now i'm within 0.3 the grade is within 0.4 so we're good to go i'm going to shut my outriggers off you can kind of hear the truck idle back down and then that alarm goes off as well from here i'm going to go ahead and put my pins in Always being mindful to have the yellow handle towards the back. And what that's gonna do is before I come down with my operation, I'm gonna be able to have that big yellow pin kind of hitting me in the face and saying, hey, we need to pull those before I can come down. Now with our outrigger set, we can go back to our screen. Pins are all in place. I'm good to start using the, the ladder. Uh, if you have any questions on some of these screens, you can navigate these by use of this right here. We're gonna be able to see that when these are green, that's telling me that I've got full pressure down, so it's good to operate on them, uh, and that they're 100% out, which means I'm not short jacking. If I was short jacking on either the officer side or the the uh, driver's side, I wouldn't have full range of motion with my ladder towards that side. I will have some motion, but not all of it. As we continue to go through, and there's a little bit of a leg, this is telling me what I have for a reach, um, what I can do uh, for operationally. If, if I've short jacked one side or the other, it's gonna tell me how far I can go uh, and what my limitations are gonna be. Since we're not short jacked at all, we've got full use of the ladder, we can go full 360 and as far out extension as we can do it. 
Again, we're going to kind of go through some of these live loads of, of what we have here. Uh, again, the ladder is going to kind of notify you if you're overloading it. And then just some basic pump and engine information. And we're back to our home screen. Uh, this is also going to tell us if we've pinned the waterway uh, to a rescue or a reach mode. So right now we are in a rescue mode. That's generally how you're going to leave this ladder set up is in rescue mode. And that's just because uh, if we're going to be fighting a defensive fire, we have a little bit of time to set it to a reach mode. Uh, it still flows water in the rescue mode. It just doesn't put the waterway at the tip. And uh, we don't have as much time in a rescue mode if we want to put the ladder up and use it to get somebody off of a roof or out of a window. You don't want the waterway, uh, that master stream, in that window. So it kind of moves it back a fly section. So it's just something to be mindful of, and I'll kind of show you that when we get up there. From here, we'll climb up to the turntable. We'll go over the operation of the ladder. You have the same screen over here. The only difference is I have a, uh, a fast or a slow mode so I can kind of toggle if I want it to be rabbit or turtle. I'll leave it in rabbit mode right now. I also have an option to allow tip control. Uh, anytime that somebody's at the base and holding this in, there somebody can be on the tip and actually move the ladder in a creeping slow mode. So I'll show where those controls are located as well and kind of some of the positioning that you need to be in to make that happen. Another screen that you get up here is going to be the auto stow, and that only comes on when the ladder's close to the back to the truck. So from here, I've got my joystick, and you can kind of see the, the controls are labeled here on how they all work. But as long as I'm squeezing this trigger right here, that's going to give me operational use of this ladder. So as soon as I squeeze, I'm able to go ahead and come back. But even as I'm pulled back, if I let go of that trigger, it doesn't allow me to move that la the aerial in any way at all until I squeeze that trigger again, and then it's going to let me use it. So as I set up the ladder, I can do all three I'm going up, extending, and rotating all at the same time from here. Another thing that you're going to be able to see on this screen is when the ladders align, you get that green flash. So when that green symbol right there with the ladders is lit up, that's telling us the ladders are lined up so it's easiest to climb. I'll kind of show what that looks like when I go up here. You also have control of the, the elevated master stream from here as well. You can change from a straight stream to a fog, left, right, up, and down. All right, we'll walk up now and kind of show you what it looks like. So when we're getting that green symbol on there with the ladder alignment, that's telling me that the rungs from the fly and the base are aligned. So as I'm climbing, they're lined up. If they weren't lined up, the other one would be over here, and it kind of creates a little bit of a tripping or a stumbling hazard that you can possibly have. On the side of the base section, you can see that we also have a 10-foot roof ladder. This is going to help get over parapets, or if we needed to go to the roof, we can actually put this on the roof as well for a working off of for stability. Uh, if you need to go over a parapet, you can just deploy the roof hooks hook to that very end rung of the ladder and then just drop it down and you climb up and down using it that way. On this side, we store our Stokes basket. So as this gets opened up, you can see in here that we have our Stokes basket and we do have some small sections of rope and webbing set up for uh, use of an undersling on the ladder if need be. Keep climbing up.
up here we can see where our elevated master stream actually is sitting since it's pinned to rescue mode it's not at the tip of the ladder if it was in reach mode it would be pinned to the tip of the ladder and it would be out at the end right there but if we wanted to use that to access a window or a roof we don't all want all of that sitting in there so from here if somebody was going to be using the master stream they can control it by these switches right here as well so if the ladder's been put in place we can use it here and direct that stream we also have the option to turn off the master stream with this right here so if we turn this to the right it'll, all the way it'll close it and then we would have the option to be able to open this up right here by opening that up I now can use this as a standpipe connection to a parking garage, roof, or a high apartment building. Being mindful, if I'm going to use that, I need to ensure that this is closed. Anytime water's coming up, you have the option of using either or both of these, but if we're using both, and this is being connected to a hose, that's spraying water as well. So being mindful, you're gonna need to shut this off before we're gonna set up that operation. Do have a pike pole secured in at the tip. Here we have some ladder steps that can be flipped down. The point of those is to allow someone to rest their feet on here. And what we want to do is we want to get our feet out from these rungs. So I don't want my feet down in these rungs. I want them up here out of the way. The purpose of that being is if I was in that creep mode or the tip control mode, I can do all of the ladder operations from here. So making sure that I had a ladder belt, I would go ahead and clip that in. I would make sure that my, my boot rests have been kicked out, ensuring that nobody else is climbing on the ladder. And then I'm going to make sure that the base section is going to give me that tip control. So somebody on the bottom on that turntable is going to be giving me operational control. If I'm gonna get in trouble, all they have to do is let go of that button down there and that's gonna stop tip control. But I can do all of those ladder functions from here as long as somebody was at the turntable giving me that option. You also have floodlights that you can use as well along with a power connection at the tip. So if we needed to work at a elevated area, we have the ability to have an electrical connection, a waterway connection, lighting and then an egress with the ladder being mindful of, of how we'd want to set that up all right i'm going to get back down to the base section and we'll go ahead and work on putting this away all right we're back down at the turntable from here i'm going to go ahead and bring the ladder back down uh, from our screen we can kind of see how high up off the ground how far out from the turntable our degree of of angle uh, and the extension that we have left that we can still go out from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this back close to the ladder truck and that'll allow me once I'm close enough to actually do an auto stow so I want to be keeping an eye on it making sure I'm not going to hit anything it's a smart ladder it's not supposed to hit the ladder truck but it still can hit trees buildings light poles any of the other obstructions that you might have out here so I'm just going to keep bringing it back down close to the ladder truck all right now that I've gotten it close you can see that my auto stow has come back on the ladder's sitting generally almost all the way put away but what it's gonna allow me to do is really bring it in that last little bit without trying to line it up perfectly so I'm just gonna go ahead and hold that button right there and as long as I'm holding it it's gonna go ahead and stow that ladder for me We're put away you just let go and you're able to walk away from it then one last thing I'm going to show while we're up here still before we put the outriggers away 
is how to select either the rescue or the reach mode. So there is a lever on the side of the ladder. So you can either have it in water tower or rescue mode. So right now we're in rescue. If I do that, I've now pinned it to water tower. And what that's gonna do is gonna put it in that reach mode and pin that waterway to the very end section of the ladder. We leave it in the rescue mode, because again, if I want to deploy this ladder quickly and get it to a window, I don't want to have to come up here and set this. I've got a little bit more time for a defensive fire. I can come over and set it up for water tower mode. All right, before I come down, I'm sure that this has been shut. One last thing I didn't hit on was the intercom. If I want to talk to somebody on the tip, I just have to hold it, and that's going to allow me to talk to anybody up there. I can change my volume up or down. When you're on the tip, you don't have to hit a button. It's just automatically going to pick it up, which is why you're already getting some of this static right now. That speaker is just always live. So we generally leave it in that middle section so it's not blaring at us. Uh, but anytime you're on the tip, you're gonna be heard down here. If you wanted to access the LDH, just open this door up right here and that's how we access that compartment right there. All right, we'll come down. All right, before I do anything, I wanna make sure I pull my pins. We don't wanna start coming down and pinch these pins in there. It can do some damage to uh, the pins. Nothing serious, but nothing that we wanted to put the truck through either. We'll do the same thing on this side. All right, now that our pins have been put away, we're just basically gonna work this back opposite of the situation that we started with. So we're gonna come back. First things first, all rigger switch turned on. Bring our outriggers up. Always being mindful, we wanna keep an eye on it. We don't wanna pull these in and have somebody standing in here. So that's, it's designed this way where somebody has to be over here keeping an eye on it. Bring the outriggers in. That side's put away. We'll come over here. Outriggers up. All right, and now we'll bring them in. Turn my outrigger switch off. Shut our doors. The last things I'll do here is we'll go ahead and pick up our pads and put it all away. I didn't show on this truck like I did on Tower 3 flowing water from the tip. Uh, being mindful if we are going to flow water uh, out of the, or the aerial device that uh, anytime that we're going to put it away we want to make sure our aerial drain has been opened up. We're going to allow that water to come out. We don't want to try to put the ladder away and pressurize that waterway system without a way for that water to escape. So we're going to make sure that that's open allow the ladder to come back to a, a closed and put away position and then we'll be able to put the truck away that's a pretty generic basic overview of ladder one hope you enjoyed have a great day